Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE. And in this video, we will look at more than 20 different ways to match to a single impedance. Before we can start this experiment, we need to pick an impedance for the load that we're going to match to. And what I did so that you wouldn't think I was playing some kind of game, I drew two circles on a Smith chart with a 3 to 1 and a 20 to 1 SWR. And I asked my wife to come downstairs and click somewhere in this area in here so that the impedance that we would be using would be less than a 20 to 1 SWR, but still than more than a 3 to 1 SWR, figuring that that would be a pretty reasonable thing to do. If we, if we picked a number way out here with 100 to 1 SWR, it's a little bit harder to match and it's less likely to, to be a case that somebody would want to do in reality. And if we pick something too close to the center in here, there's not much of a challenge to match at all. So she picked an impedance. And what she ended up picking after, and I rounded it to the nearest whole number, was 37 plus J106, which is about an eight, a little bit more than an 8 to 1 SWR. And that's the impedance we will use for the rest of this experiment. Also, before we start, I drew this set of arcs on the Smith chart. And there's probably another way to do it than what I did, but I just started 50 ohms and drew some arcs with some negative component values. This divides the Smith chart into four areas. They're all of equal area. These two areas are circular, and these two are not. But the L matches that are possible to match to, to any impedance in the Smith chart, there are eight different L matches. Uh, Four of them have two, one inductor and one capacitor. Two of them have two capacitors only, and two of them have two inductors only. And in this area up here, you can match with two capacitors plus two of the other uh, one inductor, one capacitor networks. Down here, you ma can match with the two inductor only networks and a, di a different one inductor, one capacitor network. And in these two areas, you can match only with two different one inductor, one capacitor ne networks. So I just thought I'd mention that before we start. One more thing. I decided to use 14.1 megahertz, which is in the 20 meter band, as the frequency for all these experiments. 50 ohm source, the load impedance that my wife picked, and I'm used, going to use an X-match generator. The reason being is that I don't have to get the match exactly perfect here to have the X-match give me the right power at the load. Uh, if there's a little bit of mismatch loss here, the X-match generator takes takes that into account. And if I, I can't be too far off where the component values are, are significantly different in the, and the value of the power is wrong. But if they're very, very close, and I don't want to have to zoom in to high magnification to get this exactly correct. I also thought about whether I should, should display the output in watts or in dB. dB probably is a better way of doing it, but I think more people who watch the channel feel more comfortable with watts. So I think what I'll do is I'll set the generator to be a 100 watt generator. That way it's a nice number. We'll be able to compare 100 watts being a perfect, and a perfect network to some amount of power less than 100 watts to be, which will be all the networks we'll, we'll have actually. And 50 ohm source, and let's get started. There are some number of single component matches that you can achieve with the um, with the, and, and get to an actual one to one SWR. If you're anywhere on any of these lines I showed in the in the in the in the first graph, you can achieve that pretty closely. In this case, we're not on one of those lines, so our only other choice is a transmission line which it turns out we can't match that here either, and I'll show that in a little bit, or a transformer. And a transformer is generally not used to match single point to single point because in a small transformer, we have shunt inductance of the windings, we have leakage inductance to take care of, we have turns ratio, and trying to get all those things right to match exactly from this point to this point is almost an impossibility. So I'm gonna say that there are no single point matches. However, there is one match which really isn't too bad. And that would be a series capacitor. It gets us down here so that we're within like 
we're definitely within a 1.5 to 1 circle. So anywhere from 117 picofarads to somewhere around 96, 97 to 117 picofarads, which is a pretty wide range, would get you into a pretty decent SWR range. That's not a match, so I'm not going to count that one, but this is the only, this is the best I can do with a single component. So moving on, let's begin with some real matches. And we'll use the SimSmith automatic L network to do our first matches. The first match will be a low pass L network. We start here, we, we use the shunt capacitor to move to here, the series inductor to move back to here. And this match has 98.54 watts at the output, or we lose 1.46 watts. That's a pretty good match. We also have the choice of making this a high pass network. The high pass network turns out to be considerably more efficient. It's 99.53 watts at the load, or 0.47 watts. So it's basically three times more efficient than the low pass network was. In this case, you cannot draw any conclusions that are general. That's all dependent upon this, this impedance point. If the impedance point was somewhere else, you could have, we would have had completely different results. Now those are the two L networks. So that was network one and network two that both matched. Now we also have, since we're above this line and we're in this area up here, we have the choice to match with two capacitors only. And let's match with a shunt capacitor to start with, and then a series capacitor. And for all these examples, I'm using the this, this, this standard Q of 2K and 200 for the inductor. Uh, and for transmission lines, I'm just going to use a typical transmission line. This is not a real accurate power type of uh, analysis. What we're trying to do here is just, I'm trying to show that there's a lot of different ways to match and give everybody some ideas as to how to do this. And Okay, now we've matched with two capacitors. 99.86 watts. This is, again, three times more, three times less loss than the high-pass L network. Capacitors are much better than inductors, and we all know that. So if I can do a match with capacitors only, I'm generally better off. I can also switch this circuit around now to be a series capacitor and then a shunt capacitor. Gives us different values, of course, for the two components. Ninety-nine point eight six, exactly the same answer as before. So both the two capacitor solutions had exactly the same fourteen. Excuse me, one hundred and forty milliwatts out of one hundred watts was lost. It'll turn out that these two solutions are probably either the most efficient or they're right, very, very close to being the most efficient match that we can possibly have. Here's the impedance we want to match again, uh, the, the load impedance, and here's where we want to end up. What I've got on this graph. It's kind of complicated, but what it is, it's a whole series of transmission lines that are in series with the load, but they are, are varying surge impedances. The surge impedance varies from 5, 5 ohms to 500 ohms, and I sweep from pretty much zero length to a half a wavelength. And what we see here is all the... If you had an area, if you're starting here and you're trying to match to any area within the, in, in here, or any area in here, you're capable of doing it with a transmission line of the right impedance. Now that doesn't mean you can actually buy that transmission line, but it means you're capable of doing it. That would be a single component match. And as I said before, we couldn't do it um, to 50 ohms, and this is not a solution. But what, what I'm trying to show here is the next group of matches we're gonna use transmission lines. We're gonna use some of these characteristics but I'm not going to allow the matches that I come up with to use anything other than 25 ohms, which would be two 50 ohm transmission lines in parallel, a 50 ohm transmission line, or a 75 ohm transmission line, which is, which is easy to come by also. But uh, this is kind of an interesting little experiment, and you can do this if you sweep these in the right order, and you can make a particular impedance be swept completely before you go to the next impedance. And this does show the matching range. Now, if we move this point, we can see what happens. And if I move this point around, we can't get it negative here. If I move it certain different places, I might change my matching range quite a bit. Anyways, um, 
It's kind of interesting to try to match with a single piece of transmission line. People do it all the time on circuit boards. It's very seldom done with uh, real components because you just can't buy the transmission lines at enough different uh, impedances. Now we're going to match with two components, one of which is a transmission line of some flavor, and the other one is an L or a C. Let's start off with a 50 ohm piece of transmission line and see what we can do. Well, this this is this is this is almost too easy. This one. And this should be very, very efficient. It's a small piece of transmission line that acts like, it ends up acting like a capacitor did when we did the two capacitor solution, a shunt capacitor. It's not quite a shunt capacitor, but it looks kind of like that. So we end up slightly at a different place here. And if you compare this value of capacitance to what we needed before, it's probably off by a couple picofarads. But what we're seeing is 99.8 watts. I need to make this be 100 watts again. Okay, 99.8 watts. A little bit less efficient than the 99.86 with the two capacitors, but we know that transmission lines are not nearly as efficient as a capacitor in terms of using them as a component or in, in terms of anyway. They're, they're just, they don't have Qs that high or effective Q. So here's another match. We'll call this... Um, okay, that's good. Um, we can also change the impedance of this piece of transmission line to be 75 ohms. That doesn't change too much, but we could use that. What the point I'm trying to make here is that you can use, in, in this case, the impedance of the transmission line matters very little, 99.7 watts. It's hard to get uh, too upset over a tenth of a watt at 100 watts. So if you had a piece of 75 ohm transmission line, use that instead if you, if you want. Again, slightly different capacitor value. It was 90-something picofarads before it's 87 now. We could... Um, let's try a series inductor here. Oh, and we need to bring the transmission line down to here. And then... Rotate back there. Okay, so now here we have a piece of transmission line on the pink uh, trace, and on the green trace we have the series inductor. The inductor has lower Q, of course, than the capacitor has, plus the piece of transmission line, instead of being half a foot long, is now 7.8 feet long, and consequently our power has dropped to 97.96 watts. That still isn't too bad. That's not much of a much of a difference from 100 watts, but that's an, that's another way to match. And we could of course change this to be a 50 ohm transmission line. And when we do, again, it changes the values a little bit. And we're at 98.4, uh, a little bit higher than just just a minute ago. Neither, neither of those are very big differences. We can, um, if we wanted to, we could continue on, and hopefully everybody is, is going to get the idea here real quickly that it doesn't, we don't gain anything by starting to put a lar large amount of transmission line in, in a circuit here. What that does to us is that just increases the loss. So we try to take the most direct path possible. But here's another path. Now we're down to 90, 95 watts. And just to be complete, we could rotate this all the way up to here and put a shunt capacitor in. And now we have a little bit more efficient component here, but we had more transmission line for this distance. We're down to 91 watts. So there's, and, and we could again, we could go around and around and around if you wanted to on a transmission line, and you would keep getting lower and lower power output. But these are additionally more ways to, more ways to solve this circuit. There are a, a ton of other ways. We, do we have to have the uh, transmission line first, or could we have it second? 
All right, I needed a drink there. Let's um, go back here and now put the transmission line second. Rotate that. Come down here. And with 50 ohm transmission line out here, you're never going to, you're never going to, ma it's never going to, it's never going to get cross the 50 ohm plus J0 point because this is rotating around it all the time. Let's change this transmission line impedance to say be 25 ohms and uh, that's a problem with the drag it dragging with the transmission line. If you drag it in the wrong direction, it thinks you went around the loop a second second time. Okay. There's a Trans, the transmission line is second. It's 25 ohms now, and we have 99.68 watts. The reason this is very efficient, again, is we have a capacitor which is efficient and a small length of transmission line. But that's another, that's another way of doing this. Could we make this be 75 ohms and match? I don't think so, but let's see what happens. And the way you do this is you just make this piece of transmission line long, And then we'll just vary the capacitor and see if we ever get to where. And we don't. We are we, the the, um, the path never crosses 50 plus J zero. So I was right. We couldn't we couldn't do this this the 75. Anyways, um, those are more ways to do it. There are, there are other pieces. There are other pieces of transmission line we could put together and make this get matches again. But I'm trying not to get the the uh, number count too high. Just making small variations of what I already did. So let's keep, let's move on again. Doing this is uh, taxing my brain to do this on the fly, so I need some uh, short breaks. Let's um, do a Pi network here, low pass Pi network, and let's make it match. In the limit, the Pi network could be done such in such a way that looked like this. And if you look at look at this, this looks very much like the original low pass uh, L network, but it had just a little bit of a movement from the from the um, output capacitor, which is only 25 picofarads. And what we see is instead of 98.554 watts we had originally, it's 98.47. So even though this is a pi network, I'm not going to count it. Um, but let's move it up to out to here, say, and do this. We're going to see the efficiency. The efficiency has dropped. Here, the efficiency is such it's 96.9 ohms. So this is a match. And if you had a fixed inductor, you had to use a fixed inductor, and you had variable capacitors. You know, you might be happy with with that. If we continue to move on out further here. What we'll say is we're down now to 91.46 watts. So this path is a less direct path from here to here. Typically, if we take the more direct path from the load impedance to the generator, we're better off. If we take the we take a path that goes out to the outside of the Smith chart and goes around the Smith chart, we typically see lower efficiencies. So that's another that's another another type of match. The next network to do since we just did a low pass pi, it's probably a high pass pi network and see if we can make that match. There's a high pass pi network and it takes a different path. Again, let's see if we can do the, let's do a case where we don't have very much rotation here due to the first component. Sometimes when you have multiple components, it's a little tricky to drag them. This isn't direct, but it's not too far away. 99.34 watts. This is a very good solution. 
And of course we can move out further like we did with the low pass pine network. Ninety eight point six. And that's another solution. Let's go all the way out here to the edge. Ninety one point seven. Again, another solution. This solution would have a low, uh, would have probably a worse SWR bandwidth. Would well, definitely would have a worse SWR bandwidth if this impedance stayed constant with frequency. However, in the real world, this impedance is going to vary with frequency for most cases, and depending on the type of the topology of the tuner, you might be able to compensate for the effects of this, or you might be in phase with them, in which which case the uh, SWR bandwidth would get worse. So. Um, I'm not looking at that this, in this uh, example, but it's something to keep in mind. And, um, you know, the, again, the point is, if you are incapable of, of running through and finding many of these, um, these matches, like I'm able to do right now, you might need a little more practice with, uh, you know, how the components move on the Smith chart. There's really not a lot of complication here. This is just a matter of trying things and a matter of, kind of being, you know, certainly familiarity breeds uh, breeds the um, confidence that you, that you can do it. Here's a typical high pass, high pass T network that we see in pretty much, you know, half or more of all the tuners that are currently on the market. And again, remember, I'm not building a tuner for wide, wide, wide range or variable range. I'm building a matching network for a single specific impedance. It takes a path similarly, if this was a little bit shorter, it was similarly to the, um, low, it looks like a low pass net, um, excuse me. Um, I said this was a high pass T network. This is a low pass T network, I'm sorry. We'll do a high pass T network in just a second. This is very efficient, 98.31 watts. Now, if we move the first inductor out to here, we're going to see that the efficiency drops. And it drops a lot, 94 watts. Again, that's not that big a deal. A user who saw 98 watts or 94 watts, they wouldn't know the difference. Now, remember, if we're, if we're going to run 10 times that amount of power, that's 940 watts versus 980 watts. That's a, so that's a 40 watt difference in, in the box. On the air, you would never hear that. It's, a fraction, it's just a, a fraction of a dB. So uh, there's there's two more matches. Let's go back now to the to the high pass or high pass T network. And make it match. Now we can start the high pass T network. Let's let's do like this to it. Ninety-nine point four watts. So the old story about high-pass T networks being lossy. In this case, it's, it looks pretty darn good. But it turns out that the high-pass T network makes the path from the load to the source fairly direct, and that's a good thing. Now let's make the path not nearly so direct. Ninety-five watts, and just as an experiment, let me move this way, way, way out to the edge. Let's see what happens to the path. Um, the path is out. I could probably get out a little bit further, but that's that's not too bad. It's getting a little touchy to adjust here too. 
88 watts. This is the first this is the first example of a network that's been below 90 watts. Again, some of the other ones could have been that inefficient had I taken the the path all the way out this far. Out here we're talking about 112 to 1 SWR at that point. What will happen is this component out here we either have a lot of voltage across it, a lot of current through it. It's this inductor has 729 volts, 2.9 amps. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that's only at 100 watts too. Now, if we had if we ran 1,000 watts, we'd see three times as voltage, so we'd see 20, 2,200 volts RMS, and we'd see nine amps RMS through here. So, you know, draw your own conclusions. It's uh, I don't know. That's the advantage. That's kind of the advantage of the high pass T network. It lets you move around the Smith chart a lot, but you end up with a lot of paths that are that get close to the outside edge of the Smith chart with with component values that are nominally what you would expect to buy. All right, and just when you thought there couldn't be any more networks, there are. This is a different network than either of the other two before, and. I believe we can make that match too, probably. There's probably a pretty efficient match, 99.7. We can make this circuit, of course, less, ma uh, less efficient also. This is not going to drag nicely. I actually can't go that far in this network and get it to match. I can go this way though. So this is going to be this is actually going to be fairly efficient. Ninety-eight point ninety-nine watts, and if I take take this one all the way to the limit down here, or almost to the limit, this ends up reverting to the low-pass L network, which was ninety-eight point. I was which was ninety. Yeah, the low-pass L was ninety-eight point five four. This is ninety-eight point five nine watts, so it just a teeny bit uh, better, but. That's because we moved in here a little bit to start. Maybe one more network and then call it quits. I don't know if I'm at 20 yet. If I'm not at 20, I'll come back and get a couple more. Let's try a three capacitor network. I know we can do that because the fact that we can do it with two we can, capacitors, we can do it with three. We can start here. Ninety-eight point eight six. That's as high. That was the same as the two capacitor network. And the two capacitor network went out to here and then straight down. This is almost the same path. Likewise, um, we could make this network be three capacitors of that orientation, and I'll bet we have the same loss. Be my guess. It's somewhere here. We have to make our our cut down to the. R equals 50 circle. And again, 99.86. There have been an awful lot of circuits I've done so far. There are plenty more. Uh, you could do a Pi L network, a Pi C network. You could do networks that had a resonance circuit in them. I didn't do any tapped inductor circuits. There's just a, there's a plethora of circuits we could use. The point I was trying to make is there's an awful lot of circuits, and if you wanted to do something that you had limited parts, you could pick the circuit that would match the components you had. Yeah, there's just a lot of ways to do this. Let me go uh, see how many circuits we are, and I might be back, but I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. And again, we looked at one parameter and only one parameter for the f uh, matching networks, and that was the output power. And SWR bandwidth is probably more important in a lot of cases than output power is. The difference between 99 and 96 watts, 
I would I would take the 96 watts out of my tuner any day of the the week if it gave me an extra 100 kilohertz of bandwidth uh, across the band so I didn't have to adjust it. So those are things to consider, and that's definitely a much more complicated topic to look at that because you need to start with a particular antenna and a particular length of feed line to see what the change in, it, in impedance you would get with, with frequency would be. So anyways, again, this, these are more insights into some of the stuff you can do with SimSmith. Hope everyone's enjoyed this. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, and I will be back with more videos.